Hello, and welcome back to part two of section 9.1. Um, we're still dealing with the sequences and series. Um, today we're going to be specifically looking at the um, series portion, though. Before we look at the series, though, we need to go over summation notation or um, sigma notation. Now, sigma notation looks kind of like this. This E-looking symbol is actually called a sigma. And essentially what it means is we are going to add up all of the terms. So it says the sum of the first n terms of a sequence is represented by. Now typically you will see this piece right here and then this is what we're actually doing. Now each um, with the sigma in typically in your textbook um, like the n would actually be on top of the sigma and the i equals 11 would be below the sigma letter um, but i is called our index of notation and it usually is where we are going to start um, our summation and n which is this right here is our upper limit of the summation um, and this is where we are going to end our summation so if we look at our first example that deals with um, summations, I see that I have the summation right here of 4i plus 1 and I'm going to be starting at i equals 1 and I'm going to end when i equals 4 and I'm going to go in consecutive integers from 1 to 4. So this, if I show all my work, is going to look like I'm going to go 4 times 1 because I'm starting out with 1 plus 1 and I'm going to add that to my second term which is 4 times 2 plus 1 I'm going to add that to my next term which is going to be 4 times 3 plus 1 and then I'll add that to my final term or 4 times 4 plus 1 now when I simplify these I end up with 5 plus 9 plus 13, plus 17, and this will give us 44. For part B, we're going to do the same thing. Um, in this case, I'm going from 2, however, I'm going to go from k equals 2 to 5. So to do that, we're going to go 2 plus, in this case I'm starting out with 2, and I'm going to cube that. And I'm going to add that to 2 plus 3 cubed plus 2 plus 4 cubed plus 2 plus 5 cubed. And when I simplify, I end up with 10 plus 29 plus 66 plus 127 is equal to 232. Finally, for part C, I'm going to take and evaluate my summation from 1 to 6. So this is going to give me 2 divided by 1 factorial plus 2 divided by 2 factorial plus 2 divided by 3 factorial plus 2 divided by 4 factorial plus 2 divided by 5 factorial plus 2 divided by 6 factorial. When you simplify this, you get 3,400 oops, sorry, you will get 343,000 So 343, 611. Now there is a way that you can do this on your calculator. And I don't have a calculator sitting in front of me, but I believe you go to your math function, and I want to say you go over to either number or operations. And what you're going to be looking for is you're going to, and it's number 5, but you are going to go to sum, and on your screen you'll get sum with the parentheses, then you're going to go back to your math function and then you're going to go to the other one. It's either number operation for the second one and you're going to select 
sequence. And then what you have to do is you have to type in your actual function. So for part A, I would actually have to type in 4x plus 1. Then you need to pu push the comma button. And I think on your calculator, the comma is right above the number 7 or somewhere in that vicinity. Then I have to tell it to take the sum of my sequence of this function with respect to x. So I will have to go in and actually go comma x and then go comma my lower limit and remember our lower limit in 1 or part a is actually 1 and then comma and then do my upper limit which was 4. I'll close my parentheses and if you hit enter you should get 44. When I return, I will show you, um, for those of you that have trouble with this, how to do this. Because like I said, I do not have a calculator sitting in front of me, and I apologize. Now, on page 647 in your textbook, there's a list of the properties of summations. Okay, and just kind of in a nutshell, the first one says that if I take the, su or the summation from i equals 1 to n, of some constant c. This is going to be doing the same thing as if I were to just take that constant and multiply it by n. Your next property says if I take the sum from 1 to n of a constant times my function. This is going to give me that constant times the summation from 1 to n of my actual function itself. In other words, you could take the fun or the summation of the function alone, find out what that summation is, and then just multiply your final answer by your constant, and that would give you your final answer. Your third property tells you that if you take the summation from 1 to n of ai plus bi, in other words I'm adding two different um, functions, that's the same thing as taking the summation from i equals 1 to n of the first function and adding it to the summation from i equals 1 to n of your second function and I apologize that i should be more of a subscript. And finally your fourth property says that the summation from i equals 1 to n of ai minus b sub i is equal to the summation of i equals 1 to n of a sub i minus the summation from i equals 1 to n of b sub i. The last thing we're going to look at in section 9.1 deals with series. Now series are the sum of terms of either a finite or an infinite sequence. There, and there's two different things that we have to look at in order to determine whether it's finite or infinite. The first thing that we'll look at is if I'm trying to find the sum of a set number of terms. So I'm trying to find the sum of five terms or seven terms or twenty terms. Okay, Whatever the case is, I'm looking for a set number of terms or n terms of a sequence, this is when I have a finite series or what we call an nth partial sum. So I might be trying to find the fifth partial sum or the tenth partial sum. And we find that just by summing up all of the individual terms. Now, on the other hand, I could find the sum of an infinite series, and this is when I don't really have an ending term. Um, I'm just going to add up um, all of my terms from 1 to infinity here. And I will do an example with both to show you how we would calculate both of these. So for our last example, um, we're going to find the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of 3 divided by 10, and that i should actually be a power on the 10. So if we rewrite this, this should be 3 divided by 10 to the power of i. We want to find what we call the third partial sum. 
So that third partial sum tells me that this is going to be a finite um, summation because I'm going to add the first term plus the second term plus the third term. So that's going to look like 3 divided by 10 to the first plus 3 divided by 10 to the second plus 3 divided by 10 to the third. Now if you type this in your calculator, you will find that you will get 0 0.333 as a final answer for your third partial sum. Now in the case of part B, we want to find the sum from 1 to infinity of that same function. And I again apologize that this should be 3 divided by 10 to the power of i. So what I'm going to do here, because I'm going to infinity, I'm just going to plug in enough terms so that I can see if there's a pattern that is approaching. So if I go 3 divided by 10 to the first, plus 3 divided by 10 to the second, plus 3 divided by 10 to the third, plus 3 divided by 10 to the fourth, plus 3 divided by 10 to the fifth, plus, and I'm going to continue to do this until I get 3 divided by 10 to the nth term. Now what I'll see is as I start to add up my first term, my second term, my third term, fourth, fifth, and so on, I'm actually going to start to approach point three, 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 three. And if you recall, the decimal of point three repeating is approximately equal to one third. So we would say that as n approaches infinity, this function then is approaching one third. Or the summation of that function is approaching one third. Your fun fact for today is I forgot to wish you happy first day of spring. So because I forgot to do that, I am going to demonstrate my non-artistic abilities here. And I will give you a flower. And you guys can thank me on Monday when I return to class. Hopefully you guys have a good weekend. We'll talk to you guys Monday. Thanks.